Oh. 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 <sighs> Torchwood. I've touched on it a few times. People ask me if, I, if I'm ever going to do episode by episode reviews or more top tens involving Torchwood. And I've always said probably not because to do so would involve doing a full rewatch because I haven't watched any of Torchwood in years. And I, my feelings about the show are so uneven that I don't really want to do that. But there's always been one exception. I've I've always had a, had a tendency to be like, well, you know what, maybe I'll, I'll revisit Children of Earth one of these days. I had no idea when I was going to get to it, but uh, one of my Patreon supporters decided they were tired of waiting and commissioned me to uh, to get to it. So... Children of Earth. I have not watched this in probably uh, not quite a decade, but close. Like, I, I, I watched this when it aired. Um, and I haven't rewatched it since. Not because I didn't like it. I, I thought it was actually great. And it's by far the most solid season of Torchwood that I've seen. I still haven't seen Miracle Day, but I heard that was uneven as heck too. So this this feels like an anomaly in, in Torchwood in a, in a lot of ways. But it... I was both excited and, uh, and kind of terrified to revisit this. Not terrified in like a, oh my God, will it still be good way? But <laughs> last time I saw this thing, I wasn't a parent yet. I didn't have my own kid. I do now, and uh, yeah, this 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 was hard. This may very well be the darkest thing ever done in a Doctor Who universe story, with the exception of maybe the Sky Man uh, over at Big Finish, but this is. Bleak, and even if I were to compare it to something like Skyman, or even if I compare it to something like Black Mirror, those things are an hour. This is five episodes, nearly an hour apiece. This is a lot, and it starts bleak, and it gets worse and worse. And here's the thing: it's not bleak. Because, oh, it's it's a little bit tragic and, you know, spoilers, not everything turns out well. But it's bleak because the way people respond and react to the situation that they're in feels incredibly real. It really puts you in a position of asking yourself, what would I do? How would I feel? And I think it's very hard to not empathize with with a lot of the characters with what's going on here. So in case uh, folks aren't familiar with Children of Earth, here is our starting premise. There is a day where every single child on the planet just stops. Like totally frozen in motion doesn't last long. It's a few seconds. Then they go about the day and it's like, well, that was weird. Huh. And most people don't make the connection that this happened literally everywhere on the planet at the exact same moment in time. Torchwood catches on because that's their thing. Uh, and then the children stop again. And they all speak. They all speak in, in unison. And they say, we are coming. And that heralds the coming of an alien species known only as the 456. That is all we know of them uh, in terms of their background, their history, much of anything. And it is learned that they have a interest in the children of Earth. 
They also have the capabilities of wiping us out if we don't do what they want. And it goes from there, and I will be getting into spoilers, and I will say before I get there, but it's not enough for just to endanger a, ch a child. When I say not enough, like for me, that's kind of enough. I've said before, that's a bit of a hot button for me, like even before I was a parent, it's not something I'm particularly comfortable watching. But it's not enough for this show to just endanger kids. It actually makes the other characters and the audience to a certain extent also afraid of the children as much as they are afraid for them because these children are the mouthpiece for a big chunk of this thing of this alien species. And you see parents, even some who kind of have an idea of what's going on and the vast majority of people don't, but like a few who do, um, freaking out and terrified, you know, shouting at their children, stop. But of course they don't. They're not in control of their own voices. And of course that's an inherently creepy thing. All these children just frozen and locked and just speaking with a slightly modulated voice. Yet you can still hear the youth in, the, in their own voice behind that. A big part of what makes this bleak r really is just how much more relevant it feels now. And if, if, if this sort of thing is difficult for you to watch, I would approach this with caution. It is very well done, but it's very hard to get through. And I, I don't recommend binging it. Space out the episodes. Take breathers. Because I am going to start getting into spoilers to talk about some of the stuff that I really need to talk about here. It is unsettling, um, both now as a parent myself, but also in light of how suddenly topical it feels to see images of soldiers pulling screaming children away from their parents. And that's the kind of imagery we're dealing with in, in the fifth episode and the last episode. And part of the brilliance of this thing is it, is it builds to that. So the ch children are endangered pretty much throughout this entire thing. But we start with almost a prologue sequence to 1965 where 12 children were handed over to the 456. They were basically taken to a field, told to walk into a light, and then they were gone. And that in and of itself is hard to watch. But there is escalation because at that point, and also for the first sort of chunks of things, you know, children being put on buses or whatnot, the children have a certain trustiness. They're, they're not sure what's going on. They're uneasy, but they're like, these are the adults. They're, got, they're listening. They say, oh, okay, okay, well, guess we'll do that. And they don't know what's coming. The adults do, but the kids don't. And then towards the end where what the people in authority, the people in power decide that they're going to do in order to placate the four, five, six, basically give them 10% of the child population of the planet. Um, and they, that's what the four, five, six wants and that's what they're going to give them. And the lengths that they're prepared to go to escalates to pulling, screaming children away from parents. And it's unsettling to be able to turn on the news and see very, very similar footage. Um... <clears throat> And I don't want to, I don't want to turn this into a big political point, but like that, that was part of the reality of my rewatching this. So there you go. Um, we get a really big highlight on Peter Capaldi as a character uh, by the name of John Frobisher, who's just a government middleman. 
He's just the guy who comes in and puts in the work and tries to keep the try and tries to grease the wheels and keep everything moving smoothly. And he gets a lot of stuff dumped on him. And he nods and he does the work for people who are making decisions above his pay grade, but are also prepared to leave him holding the bag when it, t when it comes time for consequences to happen. And Capaldi's great in this. You really get the sense of conflict because he is a parent, which means his children are at stake with what's going on. And his commitment to seeing this job through, he believes that his job has value even as he's being asked to do these things. Until he's pushed to the point that he is at the very end where he's told that his children will be given up to the four, five, six, so that it maintains the image that the government was tricked by them and didn't and didn't do this voluntarily. It has to look like the the people in government also suffered a loss because otherwise, if all their children are protected, it's too obvious. And that pushes him to the point that he kills his children and his wife and himself. And it's a character that could have been very slimy, very spineless, and very unsympathetic. And he's none of those things. And he's not just sympathetic for the easy link of he's a parent with his own kids. He's sympathetic because Peter Capaldi injects a lot of empathy into this character. Uh, the 456, uh, it's great that we see so little of them. We see these sort of, they almost look like scorpion tails, like in this mist. And like when they talk and communicate, they like spew this, this green, it's like bile. But it just seems to be something that they do. Um, but we never get a good look at them, which is, I think, to their, to their benefit. It's mostly just the voice that we get. And this is also one of those instances where finding out some of the answers makes the situation scarier and more depressing and more effective. Because... I remember watching this the first time, and obviously this time I already knew, but I remember watching this for the first time and thinking to myself, what possible use could they have for the children? You know, what whatever the answer to this is, it's going to be a disappointment, but it wasn't because the idea that they are getting high off something that human children do or generate or emanate or whatever... <coughs> They're putting us and like we are we are turning over our children for something so stupid and hollow and empty. That's that's I think that's part of why it's scary because like Doctor Who has done children being used by aliens before. Um, school reunion leaps to mind, but there, you know, children were being used but for a purpose, a grand purpose, uh, not, you know, one the doctor had to stop, but for a purpose here, like, there's no purpose. It's just for the high. That makes it even bleaker. There are a couple of stumbling blocks in this thing. Um, and unfortunately, they actually have to do with Torchwood itself as, a, as an entity, because honestly... Uh, for what's the most effective stuff about the narrative? They don't need to be there. The most effective stuff deals with Frobisher, deals with the families torn apart, deals with how the government responds, both those who choose to shut down all their emotions and look at this as just a cold calculation and just make sure that they cover their own butts, which is another thing that feels really true. Like, in the middle of this crisis, aliens have come for our children, that there are still people whose first concern is, I can't let this make me look bad. Um, and all that is the most effective stuff in the film, in the, in the miniseries. And that's not to say Torchwood is not effective at all, but 
that story could have happened without them and been just as effective as it was. This really kind of comes to a head in actually only the second episode, because the second episode honestly is pointless as far as the greater story goes, because the entire second episode, it is um, Torchwood, um, you know, having, you know, some members running, Jack having been captured, but nothing about the actual plot moves forward. It just spins its wheels with Torchwood actiony scenes and Gwen Cooper firing her gun like this. And it's the it's the weakest episode by a country mile. And it's the one that focus on, focuses almost entirely on the team. And again, I don't I don't want in and, and, and you know the I do like these characters. I like Jack. I like Yanto. I like Gwen. I like Reese. I like Andy. But I'm only happy to see them because I already have an interest in them. If I was watching this for the first time and didn't already know them, I would kind of be annoyed that the really incredibly intense and compelling story is being diverted so that we can spend time with these characters that don't really seem to be helping the situation, really. Um... And, you know, Yanto's death handled fairly well. I, I, I wondered if it was going to choke me up more this time. Uh, it didn't. I think maybe it's just I didn't quite have the level of affection for Yanto that a lot of fans of Torch would do. I like Yanto. I missed, and I'm sorry he died, but I guess I, I wasn't as invested in him as a character. I didn't really, I wasn't super uh, impacted when Owen and Tosh died either, just for the record. Um, but, boy, I gotta explain this one carefully. The death of Jack's grandson doesn't quite work. Not as well as it should. For one reason that may not have been something that the makers could control, and for another reason that they could. So the thing that they couldn't control is that the um, the the mother doesn't sell the grief completely. Um, you know, I, if I were to compare it to say the uh, the the reaction of the father of Cedric Diggory in the fourth Harry Potter, like that is miles more tragic you feel the pain and i don't know if it's that they're lingering the shots too long and she wasn't sure what to do but she doesn't sell the grief hard enough jack does actually he sell he his performance is pretty much pitch perfect but that's not enough because we don't know this kid well enough the show could have done more to really ring that um but it seems to just assume that it's the offspring of a character we like. It's a kid who dies. That's enough. But we see very little of this kid. He interacts with Jack almost not at all. Um, we don't even see him interact with his mother all that much. And like I said, she unfortunately doesn't, doesn't sell it um, particularly hard either. So... For this to work, uh, to, to th for this to be the true emotional climax, and for this to be the gut punch that I think it's supposed to be, one of I, what they really needed to do was give us. Give, they needed to characterize the kid because he's just a kid. He's not a proper character. We don't know anything about him. We don't know what he likes. We don't know what kind of relationship he has with his mother or with Jack. I mean, we know Jack is a little, little estranged from him, but we're not invested in him as a character. We're invested in him as a prop, basically. Uh, so... And if they weren't going to do that, I mean, my recommendation would have been to basically scrap almost all of episode two and, like, instead put it in stuff like this so this lands properly. 
But if you're not going to do that, my backup suggestion would have been to not have it end with the death of Jack's grandson, but instead with Clem. So Clem is the adult who was the one child from 1965 who got away, but he's still connected and he's very unstable and he's very afraid. Now we spend time with him. We get to know him. We see that he's a kind-hearted but very unsettled person. And I think, and I'm not even saying that this would have been the best way to go, but given that I don't feel that the kid's death hits as hard as the show wants to, I think it actually would have hit harder if Clem had been the connection to the 456 that they did, but to not have him do this willingly. Still have Jack do what he does, which is to make a decision that is going to kill someone who is not volunteering and who probably doesn't even fully understand what's going on, and have him realize, show the pain, like, you, you, you could have milked that, because we know him. We know him a heck of a lot more than we know the grandson. And, like, I, I say that would be better, but I only mean that would be better than what happened, but it still isn't really what they should have done. What they really should have done was properly and fully characterized the grandson. And they didn't. That only kind of... That that doesn't even really render it ineffectual. What, what I've just sort of complained about... <laughs> it's so weird to me that I complain that this thing isn't bleak enough. Oh, God, what is wrong with me? But I'm not... This is not a case of the ending drops the ball. It doesn't drop the ball. But it should hit harder than it does. And that's sort of my thing. It's not a bad or ineffectual ending. It just could have been more brutal than it is. And because as it stands, the show's most brutal episodes, I would say, are one in three. Um, at least as far as the engagement of the kids go. If Yanto's the hardest moment for you, then for you it'd be episode four. I, I don't like, episode five could have been the true emotional, just drop a rock on you. But it's not. It's still really good. The performances, aside from a couple of little nitpicks, are good. The guest cast is good. Uh, Lois is, uh, the character of Lois is good. The Prime Minister is, uh, you will come to loathe him by the time this thing is done and he earns that without being overly arch and like maniacal just very very much a self-preserving politician and again that's part of what feels very real about this and the thing is and again i think uh going to how bleak and dark this thing is the Prime Minister effectively gets deposed at the end. It's been set up, it's set up that he is going to answer for the decisions he made to sacrifice children and try and hide the fact that he was doing that. But that, and there's some catharsis in that, but it's not really treated like a proper triumph because if you're paying attention, the woman who is positioning herself to take over She was the same one who said that they should not choose which children go by any kind of random lottery, but instead pick the bad children. Yeah, if she's going to take over, that's not much better. There's still some catharsis in seeing Green, the Prime Minister, go down, but if you pay attention, this is not actually an improvement. And again, this thing is dark. This, thing is, this has a very, very bleak view of, I'm not going to say humanity as a whole, but certainly of the people in power and the people who are carrying out 
their orders. It has an incredibly bleak view of them. And it's one that I wish didn't uh, feel more relevant now than it did when it aired. And ultimately, I think that may be the point that this thing is making more than anything else. Uh, as much as there's shock value in endangering and harming or killing children, that's not the point of what this thing is. And what I love, but and this still easily stands as the best thing Torchwood ever did, and the thing is it's because this is mature in the way that I wanted Torchwood to be mature. This is mature because it is dark and bleak and heavy subject matter and really forces you to ask questions about yourself and and what would you do? You know, where would you draw the line? Who Who is willing to truly sacrifice to save everyone else? Jack was. Could you? I couldn't. It makes you ask those questions, and that is the kind of mature I wanted Torchwood, as opposed to the kind of mature that it often was prior to this, which was mature because, oh, they, they said the F word. It's mature because, oh, look, they're banging. That's not mature, that's sophomoric. That's, I mean, that's juvenile. It's what has been labeled at, by society as mature content, but it's incredibly juvenile. This is true, proper, mature storytelling. It's it's got its issues, it's got its nitpicks. It I I I remembered episode two being a bit of dead weight and I'd hoped I would find more value in it this time. I really like you could you could practically skip it. You know, the the previously on and the start of episode three tells you enough that you can pr pretty much skip it. And again, it's not even bad. It just is completely unnecessary. But what is here that works is so good and so dark and so shaking. Yeah, I I can't help but take my hat. Here, here we go. We'll do it. I can't help but actually take my hat off to this thing because. Huh. And uh, with this over uh, and behind me, I got a. I don't know. I got a. You know what I'm gonna. You know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see if if my daughter is up for rewatching Hilda. Because that's. That's what I could use right now. Uh, Torchwood. Children of Earth. You've seen it. What did you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Uh, like and subscribe. They both help. There's also a Patreon. Helps me cover my bills and also grow the channel. Uh, plus uh, links to other things below. They're all down below. Check them out. Click on them. Or don't. I'm not going to tell you what to do, folks, because I'm not going to make decisions behind your back about what's best for you and then have some subordinate carry out against their own interests. Because you're the council, and I'm just running the meetings. That got elaborate. So until next time, this council is adjourned.